Okay, I have a simple part, uh, but this is being used uh, a machine in a five axis because it's pretty tall. And I don't want to be machining with the um, with the tool at the side of the cutter here. So what I've done is I've created a machine five axis machine tool. I've created one setup to work zero pointing that direction, this direction. So I want to machine this side. So I've machined this with the parallel finishing operations. My tool is coming in this way. So, oops, sorry. If I go to my toolpath editor, I can show you the tool orientation. So the tool is coming in that way. The orientation is this, and then I've also machined another one on that side. So the tool orientation is that way. So if you can see, when the tool, when this operation is done, the tool is going to be here at this location. You can see that. And then when this operation starts out, this tool is going to be right there. So, and we don't know how the tool is going to go from here to there. It's a big problem with five axis and we want to control it. The users want to control that because obviously there could be many things along the way you're hitting and also the orientation changes. So if you just uh, automatic, I mean, if you just simply said, go from this point to that point and change the angles, it's, uh, you know, Lord knows what the tool, machine tool is going to do. It's just going to run through here and, and at the same time changing the angles and you could hit anything along the way. So, so how do we control that? So I'll show you one way that we tell users that you can control is to use the power of the system. So uh, what we can do is in this, in this setup, I have a parallel finishing operation and there's a few things I can show you in the toolpath editor that are pretty useful that you might not know. Uh, so let's look at this toolpath. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new operation in the setup. That is after I'm done with this, I want to make that tool go to a safe location. Uh, so the best way to do that would be to look at the toolpath itself and then, uh, you know, generate some geometry based off of the toolpath. And the way I do that is I open my toolpath editor and I can go to selection edits. And there's this little uh, command that select cuts by a single pick. So I'm just going to do a drag and pick that. So that cut has been selected. As you can see, it's turned yellow. So now what I can do is there's another nice button, another nice feature here, uh, you know, convert selection to curve. So this is a question that some of the advanced users ask us, how do we convert our geometry, or, I mean, our toolpath to geometry? So this is what, how you do it. You will select something using the toolpath editor, and then you convert that to geometry. So it should have converted. Oh, let's go back. I'm going to turn that off. I'll select that. So it is, there's a little curve that has been created. So this was created, this was generated by the CAD system. Uh, I mean, we actually, the CAM system actually converted it. So, so I'm going to turn off the uh, gumball so we know that. There it is. Okay, so um, the, uh, what I can do now is I can use this curve uh, because this is where my, this point, end point is where I'm going to end up, you know, after generating the toolpath. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a point using the CAD system at the end point there. And then I can delete that curve. I'm going to select that curve, turn my gumball back, and then let's say I move it up here, uh, give it some uh, safe distance to move. Okay, now all I have to do is my tool ended up here after this operation was done. And then I'm going to create a simple two and a half axis operation, an engraving operation using the same tool. Ball mill. And then control geometry, I'm just going to select this curve, which is just a point and generate. So now I have a toolpath right there. So what's going to happen is so if I post this operation, uh, let's let me suppress this operation so I'll, I'll post it first without that operation so so I can do a post all so if I post all this is my first CSIS setup which is uh, one one side let me look for the next setup okay as you can see uh, this is where my point uh, the Z values probably, I don't even have a Z value. So it's basically, um, you know, machine there. 
and it's sitting at this point. Why minus point five? Why is there not? Maybe it's, give me one second. I'll put all coordinates in local now. Okay. So uh, that Z value, the Z value actually, actually did not change. So it's sitting down here somewhere. So now if I unsuppress it and then I post all, let's see what I get. So let me search for the second setup. Okay, here, as you can see, there's additional toolpath information. That's a Z9.345 that's been added. So this is my actually engraving toolpath. This is where my, uh, yeah, this was where my Y was the last operation that I had. And then this is, I moved this tool up to a, to a location X, Y, and a Z value of 9.3475, which is, which is a safe distance. So, so basically what I've done is I've moved my tool up there and then now it's, even now it's, it might not be safe or it might be a good, uh, uh, good way to actually transition from this point to that, uh, to the entry point over there. So the tool is sitting up here. So let me go and open that up in the toolpath editor. So the tool is actually here, uh, it's moved down machine that and it's come back up like that. So it finished off here and then moved up. I did a little uh, little go to motion here and that's where it's parked at this point. Now the post now and the post is basically then saying, go to the next uh, tool position over in the other side and with the new orientation. It might be safe to do that, but it might not too, uh, depending on your machine tool number space that you have. Uh, so there's, again, if you're concerned, if you, if you don't want the tool moving from here to there, you could do additional geometry. You can create geometry additionally. Maybe you can create an arc going from here to there and they're using the CAD system and use the engraving operation. So the tool comes up there and then arcs over there in that orientation. Um, so there's many ways you can control it. So this is a, a very nice and handy way that you can visualize how the tool is going to go from one setup to another in, in, when you're using a five axis indexed uh, operations. Uh, so hope that makes sense. Don, do we have any questions on this? Unmuted. Nope, nope. Okay. All right, and so this, this is not really restricted to five axis. Uh, what I showed you in four axis uh, is also, you could use the same uh, methodology in four axis also. So you could use an engraving tool point, uh, toolpath method even on four axis, but that's an easier way of setting up your tool change point. Yeah, you can even use axis. that in three axis too. You can, yeah, you could use it in three axis, yeah, to control. Anywhere, any, uh, anywhere you want that move tool to go to, you can. Right, and you can, yeah, anywhere you want to control the actual uh, tool, so. Okay, so let's talk about the, the last two topics, uh, the agenda, so. Okay, let's talk about this cloud licensing option. 